we're live, mate. Hey. MMA Live, here. episode three. Already. Mate, two episodes in, so yes, it is already. Uh, I've, I've always forgotten this, but guys, can you please subscribe to the channel below? We need to get them views up, right? So, mate, I'd, uh, I'd like to introduce, you know, a new guest to, to the podcast today. Marco, you want to give us a bit of an introduction, how you know me, all that jazz? I'm still trying to remember how I know you. Yeah. It's, an, that's an it wasn't <laughs> that, it's not that memorable, is it? <laughs> that's right. I know Kev, Kevin's a friend of a friend, and then I guess it took off from there, and we became good buddies after that. Can't even get the friends through the first, first instance, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, and then obviously we bonded. Obviously, we've got a common interest in NBA, MMA, boxing, and all that. He knows a lot more about MMA than me these days. Self-proclaimed, yep. Yes, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. But um, I bow to the knowledge. And then uh, I'll add a few things where I can. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, at his beautiful residence in the desert today. It's a nice 46 degrees. Oh my degrees. goodness. We're in Sydney, Australia, by the way, and it is close to 50 degrees. I'm going to exaggerate it. It's, it's a bit under there. It's but, winning uh, the battle versus the air conditioning right now. Oh my goodness. As you can see on our foreheads. That's it. So, mate, there's, this, there's a fair amount of things to talk about here. I think, um, you know, we're, what's the next UFC? I know it's Jones versus... Uh, Adesanya, right? Nope. Uh, no, 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 sorry. The, that's the, right, Reyes. That's silly. Reyes. I, I'm just dreaming that fight. That's the thing. You are dreaming of that fight. Yeah. Th- that's an interesting fight in its own accord, and we're definitely going to preview that. But UFC 247 sees John Jones defending his throne to Dominic Reyes. Are you familiar with Reyes? Bits and pieces. I know he's undefeated. Correct. So they're yeah. both going into it. Undefeated. Um, very similar sort of sort of guy to Jones, and you know, tall, athletic. Good hands. You know, we're not going to really talk about that yet, but uh, I'm pretty excited for that fight. But the rest of that fight, I think I'm really not impressed by the... The rest of the card. He's weak. Yeah, it's not So, much. look, look, you got the woman's flymate, flyweight rather, not flymate, mm. co-main event. So, Shashenko versus Caitlin Chuk again. That's literally her name. You want to read again? that? Chuk again? I'm not even like, how, how would you read that name? It's Chuk again. <laughs> Oh, no, no, Chukagian, okay? Chukagian. Chukagian. Oh, mate. But Chuk again <laughs> sounds better. <laughs> I'll go with that one from now we'll go, on. No, 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 it's definitely Chuk again. No, wait, actually, you don't want her as an enemy. Then she'll come after you, right? I don't have any friends in this business, <laughs> so it's all good, all good. But, mate, I think, you know, what's been doing the media rounds at the moment is, have, have you heard of this, like, Stephen A. Smith and Joe Rogan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole, yeah, yeah. The whole little argument about the 246, right? Hmm. So I'll, I'll paint some context here. Mm. So this is what happens. UFC 246, and actually let me, let me zoom right back and, and give you a little bit more context. So yeah. ESPN and the UFC have got a partnership. Yep. Very lucrative for the UFC because obviously everyone watches ESPN. Yeah. All the pay-per-views are now bought through it, right? That's right. That's so right. as a distribution channel, it's, it's amazing, right? They, uh, they've opened a whole new distribution channel and you know, ESPN is synonymous, synonymous with sports, right? Mm. So the distribution channel is one thing, but with ESPN, you get all the bells and whistles that is ESPN, right? And there no, there's no one... The face of ESPN is Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> and obviously Max Kellerman, right? Yeah. So Max Kellerman, really smart guy in his own, record, own accord, uh, HBO, Boxing Days, yeah. really knows that stuff very well, right? So everyone loves Stephen A. Smith, right? He's a brash black guy, talks well, high pitch, just, just gets, he gets offended about everything. He's, he gets his opinion to the front of the queue. He's an opinionated guy. And yeah, I, think, yeah, yeah. I think he's, um, he's the highest paid announcer. But I wouldn't ESPN. be. So, uh, if you ask me who's the he's highest, a, I would guess He's him. an entertainer, right? So, yeah. he, so uh, he's not doing too bad for himself. So I guess the reason that I'm, I'm bringing that in is... They're paying him a motta, ESPN, so they decided they might as well utilize the guy, right? Mm. In, and they're trying to introduce MMA to their audience. Mm. And it's the new audience that ESPN that doesn't necessarily look at MMA, MMA right? Because yeah. the guys that are going to look at MMA and UFC are, are going to look at it anyway. They don't need yeah. to convince them. So it's the, the other audience. Yeah, they're trying to go for the traditional... Fo- the basketball, yeah, NFL, the, the core audience that they have to yeah. which Stephen A. Smith, Smith rather is well ingratiated. He yeah. knows that stuff back to front. So the short of it is I, I've heard a lot of, uh, you know, telecasts by the UFC promoting it and they're doing very well. Though. They've got the resources, but these guys know jack shit about the UFC. <laughs> they don't really know. And, and even Max Kellerman, who would probably be the closest because of his boxing experience, it's, it's a different sport, right? So, for example, yeah. um, 
So Cowboy, we all know Cowboy Cerrone. He's had a bit of a journeyman career. He's done very well in his own record. Yeah. He's always gotten up there, but hasn't really closed the hump, right? Mm. So before prior, it's sort of that upper middle, right? Yeah, that's the way. That's the way. So prior to him actually getting, uh, sorry, prior to UFC 246, he got interviewed by ESPN, big slot and everything, right? So they had Max Kellerman and they had Stephen A. Smith, and Stephen A. Smith. So basically, like Cowboy's still going to fight. Like this is not his retirement fight by any, mm. but for some reason, uh, Stephen A. Smith thought as, as a line of questioning. Mate, is this, is this your final horizon? I don't know what led him down that path or narrative. Either he had nothing else to say. Or you think it's Steven just being Steven, trying to get the headline? Maybe. Who knows? But like, let's just say that Cowboy didn't take very well to that as well, right? Yeah. So even if it's to, um, to, cause, to cause headlines and that, which he, he did, didn't do, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't reflect very poorly, very well, rather, for ESPN. The short of it is they've been trying to bolster it. They've got Michael Bisping, yeah, yeah. who's actually doing it. So that adds a bit of credibility over uh, there. Bisping's a good one to listen to. Well, he's, <laughs> he's actually fought in the yeah, UFC, so yeah. I, you, I can't, think you, can't, you can't argue with credibility at all. No, you, you definitely can't. So I'm going to... Th- that's the context, okay? So Stephen A. Smith, ESPN, synonymous with each other. Uh, they decided, you know what, let's utilize this guy. People know him. Uh, yeah. Let's get him there. And at the conclusion of the fight, by the way, did you watch the fight? Yeah, well, I mean, I watched the highlights. I, yeah. I, I, didn't, well, I, didn't, hi- I didn't manage to see the pay-per-view. Well, on how the long is a highlight? Like 40 seconds? Well, exactly. <laughs> you would have, you would have watched well, it. I, let's just say I was glad I didn't have to pay the 50 to watch it, right? On yeah, pay-per-view. You would have wasted so much money. That was a, week, that was a piss week cut as well. Yeah, it wouldn't have been worth the cost of the beer at a pub. Yeah, or proper 12, which we had, which equally was horrible. Have you had that? No, but next time. I wouldn't I'll, even, yeah, I'll I wouldn't find even, a bottle. I wouldn't find even bother. Uh, so the short of it, it, it concludes in 40 seconds and Stephen A. Smith is, he likes exaggerating things and he basically goes out and said that Cowboy gave up. You know, I can't really, what, what did he say exactly? Uh, I mean, the bit like, he was, it was sensationalist, right? What he said correct. at the end. It was yep. sort of like, oh, he, he might, you know, but he, you know, he froze under the lights and it's like, yeah, okay. Pressure gets to him. Yep. It's a, that was a high pressure fight going up against Connor. Connor's yep. probably the only guy who loves more and more pressure, right? If you say we want to make the fight bigger, yep. Yep. at least, well, he doesn't show it. Yep. Right? He lives to the occasion. Mm. But his analysis of the fight was all right. You know, when he said, like, look, he got hit in the shoulder once, and then he's like, you know, gets hit, you know, with the shoulder again. He's like, your instinct at that point would be to back away, right? And try Correct. And try and refresh, gather your senses. But it was sort of, I guess, yeah, he got ahead of himself and then started using that as license to say, oh, I gave up the fight. And it's just like, well, that technique's not really used very often, right? How many, how many times have we... I mean, it's, it's not, not like Connor it's invented used, it. But, but it's, I've it's, never it's, seen Connor use it. Yeah, he's never seen Connor use it, right? He yeah. wouldn't have expected it. Yep. Okay, yeah, he could have maybe dodged a third one. Yeah. But, you know, shit happens. Yeah. Sometimes you just get surprised. Well, and, you don't, the, and you don't know, well, you don't have plan, plan C, plan D. I think Joe Rogan said it well, but... You know, UFC, boxing, a lot of these combat sports are one of the few and only sports where you can't control the time. If someone is dramatically that better than you, or everyone says that every fighter has a puncher's chance. And and that's just the gist of the sport. So, obviously, it's disappointing. Like, uh, everyone's... It's a weak card, so it's crescendoed up to the moment of the main card. Bloody hell, it probably took like three hours to get to that point. Everyone's all had a couple of drinks. They're enjoying themselves, and it just lasts forty seconds. So there's there's that human element there. But yeah, he basically communicated to the fact that he felt that Stephen. To, to be fair, because it was so long out of the UFC, yeah. that's probably people were doubly disappointed. If this was Connor knocking out someone for the third or fourth fight in a row over mm. eighteen months, and it was yet another, it wouldn't have been such a big deal. It was True. just because it was out for three years. Yep. They wanted. Some spectacle. Yeah, they, and wanted, they didn't get it. People didn't get what they wanted. Stephen yeah. A didn't get what he wanted, and he really took to it. So the short of it is uh, Joe Rogan. Obviously, everyone knows who, who Joe Rogan is in, in, in the uh, MMA uh, UFC uh, community. Mm. He had a podcast, and he effectively criticized Stephen A. Smith and said that, mate, um, he's in no position to say things like that. Um, and quite frankly, it reflects poorly on the sport, reflects poorly on the UFC, and re- reflects poorly on the ESPN, uh, you know, the partnership that they have. Yeah. Like, what are your thoughts on that as a, as a, as a sentiment and a statement? I mean, it goes both ways, right? In what sense? And like, in the sense that it's like, yeah, okay, Stephen A doesn't 
have the MMA credibility to sort of say that. Yep. But at the same time, yeah, he's got credibility in basketball, NFL, and all yep. that. But that's what he's known for. If he was a guy who didn't make crazy comments, yep. he wouldn't be where he is. That's a fair point. Right? And we just have a bit more, you know, his standard commentators, not much variation in personality. Yep. He really stands out from the pack. Yep. But it's sort of like, yeah, at the same time, he could have said it better. I just think he just went too far. He went 11, you know, 11 out of 10. Yeah. yeah. Or 11 over 10, but right? isn't that, at, 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 to your point, isn't that Stephen A. Smith anyway? Yeah, it, it is. But it, if... If you want to think of from ESPN's point of view, yep. you're trying to bring two fan bases together. Yep. Or, you know, merge. What are the two fan bases? I mean, so you, it's you, the, like you the got, non. Yeah. So your the traditional MMA casuals. fans, right? Yep. Like, like yourself, you, you know, even, even, you know, myself to some extent, you look at it, you look at someone like Joe Rogan, it's like respect, right? This mm. guy's lived and breathed the sport for yep. decades, done it himself. Yep. You know, he still practices, he's commentated virtually every fight. So when he has an opinion, you don't really go against it, right? Yeah, he's the, he's the voice of it. Yeah, right? he's the yeah. voice of it. Yeah. So it's like he's earned the credibility. So yeah. it's like that fan base respects him. Mm. And then suddenly you got a fan base from a guy. That fan base looks at someone who's an outsider yep. saying this stuff. Yep. It's not well for not good for business. Yep. You know, if you're trying to say, okay, I want to bring in the but non isn't it great crowd. for business in the sense that people are talking about it still? Yeah, that's yeah. a good point. That's yeah. why I sort of say it goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. So It's, let, not, it's not like people are going to boycott the UFC nah. because of what Stephen A. Smith said. They won't lose ticket sales. They won't. Well, I get, <laughs> and still and they won't lose it. viewers over it. And like I said, it's in the media. So if anything, you know, a good bit of hot, you know, um, arguing amongst the commentators is probably a good thing in the long run. You want to trigger debate. Yep. Um, and who knows, maybe Steve just dials it down a little bit after this, right? Still keeps his... Yeah personality there but it might be not just say look basically the guy threw the fight you know i think that was too much yeah and of he, course who's, who's, he's not gonna throw that hey I, I i insinuated that as well mm -hmm. i mean it it's hard you you see knockouts i think there was there were rumors prior to the fight that i don't know the cowboy was going to throw it yeah think about it financially yeah look i don't want to start conspiracy theories but financially for the ufc it didn't make sense for them for connor to lose no um and the fact that, yeah, look, yeah. I mean, even if he did throw it, yeah. I think most fighters these days are smarter to throw it better than that. Yeah, I that's said... A, if you're going to throw it, that's one of the worst ways. Yeah. Where you basically just get hit multiple times, multiple times, don't react. Kicked in the face. And then you just go down. Like, there's better ways of doing it. At least try and throw Connor to the ground, make it look like a contest. Yeah, you know, no, yeah, take yeah. some energy fair, out fair, of it fair, and just at least drag it to the end. Like, uh, get it to round unless two. if you, if you want to even explore this as a conspiracy theory, you know he goes. <laughs> well, then we become like Joe Rogan. Well, right? well, he goes. There are a couple of options, mate. I can I can uh, I, I can allow you to TKO me in forty seconds, and that'll cost you more. <laughs> or we can draw this out, yeah. and it can look a little bit respectable. It'll cost me less. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? I mean, if it if it if it is thrown, then obviously they would have guaranteed him more fights because you know you, you know he's, he's not exactly going to be challenging for titles after that. No, fight. it's not. But people like Cowboy, he's yeah. he's got a place. Yeah, um, he's sort of he's popular with the people. He's the people's champ. Okay, let me yeah. let let me let's dial back to that initial statement that you made and that you're trying to unite the bases. Mm. If Joe Rogan said that exact same comment, you think there'd be any backlash? Less so. Still probably. Yeah. You'd still have people going nuts. It's a ridiculous comment. Yep. But I think less so because he's not he's not an outsider and that's what it's like if Joe Rogan came in yep. un, and commentated an NBA, NBA game, right? And just started talking crap about LeBron yep. or someone in the middle of it. You'd get a pretty bad reaction you'd to it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's fair. And Steven would give him a talking to at that point, right? Yep, yep. No, that's fair. I think yeah, MMA guys or people that, you know, are really into it and mm. you know, live, breathe it and take it way too seriously like myself well, can I mean, get a, you can get a bit precious you've even got the hardcore group who are like no no pride is you know if it's not you know pride was the ultimate and you I, know, I, the, even I, the actually, ufc for them is too yeah, commercial yeah, yeah it's like it, it's a hardcore group it's pretty like pretty religious i think uh, let, let's look at a video and this is a video of this is in joe rogan's podcast i can't remember who his his guest was but uh it was someone that uh i think a commentator for bellator fighter for bellator i'm not too sure hmm. but they uh they were basically looking at a video of Stephen A. Um, boxing. Have you seen this one? No, no. <laughs> oh, man. This is going to be the first time you watch it. Uh, let, let's just... Let's just is that him on the right? That's it. He's a pretty big dude. <laughs> oh, jeez. This is horrendous. 
But basically, they're saying that like it's a weak ass punching technique. <laughs> Fair enough. And I mean, but a, do, does that bring it up? Do you have to be, you know, expert fighter to be a good commentator? Yeah, you, you, no, you don't. You don't. I but mean, we got video of him shoot, um, shooting some threes, and we know how good he is at basketball. <laughs> is he actually shooting any threes? I've never seen it. I've never seen him. No, I mean, actually, I've seen him shoot a ball. Yeah, fair enough. Um, I think you don't need to be, but mm. yeah, look, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, I think it's going to simmer down. What will be interesting is, does he come back the next... He will. He will. He will. It just makes sense. Actually, Stephen A. Um, I'm cu- the thing is, I'm curious. Like, if he says this stuff, I'd, personally, I don't mind. Right? It generates headlines. I like to see him talk anyway. Of course. Even if you think, eh, it's a bit far. Yeah. It's not something he's like, it's got, you know, it's got to be banned. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's, let him chat. Yeah, makes let sense. Him, let him talk that. Joe, Joe and him probably get behind the scenes get along anyway. Yeah. Did you hear that Conor McGregor actually had something to say about it? So no. I'll read from, from Bleacher what's, what's Report. What's he got to say? Conor McGregor has asked for an apology from ESPN journalist Stephen A. Smith on Twitter after he criticized Cerrone. I don't think he's going to get that. In response, Smith posted a clip on Twitter defending his position, tagging in Joe Rogan. Uh, McGregor, McGregor provided his thoughts. So this is McGregor's tweet. Yeah. The call you discuss here is A+. I didn't show enough. So the 40 seconds. I'm not paid by the hour <laughs> Joe's comments, however, came from the, the saying, the opposite, the fighter quit. Broken nose, orbital bone, saying different. Fighting is vicious. Those who walk deserve the full respect. Mm. Yeah. So it, looking at it from a fighter's perspective, I think at the end of the day, you can overanalyze something like this, but it's entertainment, right? Well, one thing I didn't, I didn't, I looked for it, but not deeply, was the yeah. cowboy respond to Stephen A. Smith. I yeah, didn't, it did. Did he? Uh, no, that's what I missed. Uh, cowboy. Cowboy. Like there wasn't a, like in a, interview afterwards no there wasn't uh, I don't yeah, yeah no he responded I don't think he has but I know that he he did respond may, maybe he did it subliminally on his Instagram page mm. not to Stephen A but he basically said something to the effect fuck all those who thought that I quit on the fight because I didn't to, to that effect so it wasn't it wasn't directed I mean, that's what you'd anyway. expect him to say right yep I mean I don't, I, I don't think he threw it, to be honest. I think everyone likes to have conspiracy theories. I mean, you had people saying Connor threw it against Mayweather, you know, small section. It's like, it's always going to happen. Yeah. Like a quick fight. There'll always be accusations. It's like, the way I see it, every fighter has a, you know, they have a ceiling, they have a potential. Yep. The one who has the best potential is not always the best fighter. It's the of one course. who gets closest to their potential yep. and maintains it. maxes that. it out. Yep. And sometimes they don't get halfway. Right? They, not yep. even close, right? They have a fight where they're just way off. Yep. You know, he might have gone in with, against Connor thing in plan A, then Connor got in with a couple of those quick strikes, mm. and he just didn't have a plan B. That happens. Makes sense. It happens. We have it in, you know, we have it in life, right? You're at work, something goes wrong, yep. and you do your job day in, day out, there's no problems, and something goes wrong that's already gone wrong before, yep. and you freeze up. Right? It takes you a while to figure out how to get around it. Yeah. I don't blame you. Look, at the end you of the know, day, I see think... how he bounces back. That's, yep. that's what counts, right? Yeah. Uh, he, again, he'll have his. He he has his place in the yeah. in the company. He's um, a company man. Yeah. He's as close as a company man as uh, the UFC has, and he's actually got the most wins ever in the UFC. Yeah. So he's still uh, got a good record. Uh, I don't think he'll get the corner fight again. I think there's too no. many people. Well, that, that's, yeah. There's he's too he's many a, more lucrative fights to come before that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's a gatekeeper, uh, basically. Yeah. That's how I, I mean, see. unless he goes through and just beats the shit out of his next two, three opponents. Yeah. Um, he's not going to see Connor again. No, he won't. I don't think so. I actually don't think... I don't see him... Yeah. It remains to be seen. Look, um, let's move on. And this is a bit of a different tangent. Uh, but this podcast was was created in mind for MMA. But it's really about entertainment and fight, fight, fighting entertainment, yeah, right? Yeah, So, look, Saturday, 22nd February. Oh, in the US. Sun, uh, Sunday, 23rd. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, for those of you... Going, I made this mistake. So, those of you, it's... The pub. <laughs> two if, you're, if you're watching in Australia, yep, yeah, it's Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Sunday so 22nd of February, part two, Fury versus Wilder. Excited? My fight of the year. R- Hell yeah. Come on. Well, at least on the boxing side. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Oh, it, it, even then, just the contrasting styles. Yep. You know, you get that in the MMA. Yep. But these guys are just absolute polar opposites, right? Yep. How good was the first fight? We watched that one. Yeah, we watched that one together. Man, 
we were drawn in. Remember even the, the whole we were in the, the camp was that, good. We were in that what that hotel was crazy. Everyone was really into it. Everyone loved it. And yeah. that's a that's a hotel that's um, not known <laughs> A public that's not known to like boxing, right? Yeah. Um, and I think it, in the end of the day, it's an entertainment business and Fury is entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> that's, well, that's it. i got to say, it, it helped bring back some credibility to the heavyweight division, right? It Absolutely. brought two pretty loud personalities yep. against each other. Yep. I mean, out of the ring, quite similar, the way they talk. Yep. Right. Very confident in themselves when they get in the ring. Yep. Completely different, right? And it's great to watch. Like You saw it, right? We saw Wilder swinging wild and you thought every time that perfect name every time <laughs> exactly <laughs> but you know what i mean like every time his arm would extend you would just think oh god here we go he's gonna clip him and the fight's over yep and then it was just endless amounts of remember all the evading the dodging yep we were just like when's this guy gonna get hit yep they finally got hit we thought fight over and he gets up like the undertaker yep um it was just awesome it was a good fight one. he's a very entertaining guy but i tell you what like Wilder's been on the circuit for a while. Obviously, yeah. Fury had his little hiatus and, yeah. you know, had to go through whatever demons he did. But, like, yeah, he's, he's, the, he's the selling power there. Like, it's not Wilder, even though Wilder no. probably has a more entertaining, not a style, but way of finishing. I, like, mean, the two, I mean, the two main draw cards in that division, Joshua and, Wild, and Fury, Fury. they yep. the ones. Yep. I mean, and really, that's probably what... The you know the head honchos behind boxing are hoping for they're hoping mm. for that huge unification bout in London. Yep. Matt, you know an Engl- in an all English brawl. Yep. You know there's that that can sell. I mean not saying well they can't sell, but I think that creates a better story. So you're selling that to me, and yeah. didn't you say that they've got a third already booked? Well, it's supposed to be an option. Yeah. Contingent upon. Yeah, it's already written. Contingent down. upon one one. Yeah. Because it doesn't make sense to book it if. Yeah. Well, either. Well, hold up, sorry. They they drew. They drew. So, so. If there's another draw. They should fight. It, whichever one loses, they still need another one to decide oh, yeah, yeah. really who's the dominant one, right? I'm gonna so, look at look at the odd makers, mate. Like, so how, how much think, is a draw? I think no matter what, unless it's an absolute drubbing, yeah. No matter what, it's chance that it's gonna be a third fight. Yep. The only way I see it getting cancelled is if Joshua gets in there and tries to, you know, if if, if Wilder yeah, wins, oh sorry, if, if Fury wins, yeah, and Joshua tries to negotiate and get him on board to create this unification bout in London, yeah. It's That's, a more compelling fight. It is compelling, man. You can put them in a stadium and sell out. Yeah, mass like it's. You should do that anywhere in Europe. By the way, yeah. Brexit is happening. So like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't know what that changes. I mean, they, they, you know, they can celebrate independence with that fight. You know, it's going. With You'll the, be the, the new the, independence. That's right. It's two English going at it, not an English and a German or an English and a Frenchman, right? Oh man, you know, they're still the best at boxing in Europe. They can. You know what? If they're, if they're smart. They should, uh, but that'd be the end of the year, right? Or even the middle of the year if they decided, right? Because it doesn't. How, you how can long are boxing? You usually give it goes? within six. It's, you always give it about six months at least, right, between fights. So let me sell it. If they're smart, um, whoever you know, if if Fury wins, they do Fury versus Joshua. They that's do, a more. That's a really interesting. Uh, listen to me. I'm just going to throw out no, random sorry. stuff. Um, they'll do it in Russia. And they'll make Khabib in Conor fight in Russia <laughs> the same weekend. <laughs> That'll stop everything. Well, yeah, I mean, they can do it in the same card now. I mean, okay. that, now, now, now we're just, just that's like, the the fight fans' dream, right? Hmm. By the way, on that, yeah. that man, Moscow would be awesome Moscow. for Khabib McGregor. I've, 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 I've already got. I, I was telling my mate, like in the earlier podcast, you know, the UFC. They used to do it. The, the the naming convention was UFC whatever the number is and yeah. they'd call it something right yeah. it'd be like an episode so for example the initial Connor versus Khabib was UFC I can't remember the name Bad Blood yep makes sense so this one if we went to Russia it'd be UFC Stranger in Moscow <laughs> yeah I like that, <laughs> that was I like good. that yeah, yeah that's, that's a good one that's really good I mean oh, it, it, it sells itself out okay okay hearkening back to Fury and and, and Wilder Boxing is notorious in terms of the, the the betting side and the murmurings of like fixed fights. Always. So what what makes you think that this won't be fixed if the inclination is that there's more money in, in seeing Fury win this one? Yeah, I can't <laughs> argue against w- it. Where's this fight at, sorry? Um, Fury. It's in the US. It's either... Mm-hmm. Is it Ve- Vegas or New York? Let's have a look. Yeah, Vegas. Vegas, yeah. Oh, man. That's just the easiest place to get all of those things yeah. approved. Yep. Yeah. Makes sense. Quite so, capital of the world. Yeah. So I mean, what's going to be interesting? Last time was Fury was still on the comeback trail. You could see he was still carrying a bit of. Chub. He, he still, still looks chubby though. 
I mean, that's just his body type. Yeah. But you could see, you know, he didn't have that much time, like that training time right now. He's had a fight. In with, and granted, the fight after Wilder wasn't great. I forgot the opponent. Yeah. I mean, he won, but he, you know, sort of scraped through it. Yep. But um, this time around, obviously, he's got. You know, a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, he's had some consistency. He's had some. Camps. He's had a couple of fights prior to that too, right? Yeah, so he's like he's had enough sure under his fights. belt to sort of say, look, he's shaken off the rust yep. from his break. Yeah, and man, if he as long as he stays on his toes, keeps the speed, avoids getting hit, he wins by on points by default. He's American? a point. He's a point fighter. Yeah, he's not a knockout artist. Um, man, all he has to win is if he can survive what the twelve rounds, he just has to win. You know, eight, you know, pretty much seven, eight of them, really, without, so, without getting a knockdown in the other one and losing, you know, too many points. So, h- how do you see the the fight going? In, like, how how do you see it playing out? It's gonna go late. Yeah, the, yeah, it's gonna go late. He's not gonna get hit early on. I, hard, I doubt it. Yeah, because when he's fresh, he's too quick. Yeah, I mean, you saw he dances around the ring. Yep, he's gonna use that jab keep the distance that jab really frustrated wilder in the first one. wilder doesn't clinch a lot eh? i mean no. the, i know there's not a not a lot of clinching period in yeah. in boxing but he, he i mean to to create separation for his straights he, he needs that distance anyway right yeah, so yeah. it's not that he he dirty boxes or anything but i think that's the way to go no, especially if you're missing if you've got a guy that's that elusive i think he's sort of I mean, he's, it, it sort of naturally comes back to him, right? Because in the later rounds, your opponent's a bit more tired. Yep. You're going to naturally get out of your face a little bit if they've got, you know, they'll st- keep range to just catch yeah. their breath, Makes get sense. some energy. Yep. Um, and once he's got that gap, you know, that's his bet. You know, Tyson's a classic fighter going, look, this is an art. I respect it. I fight it like an art, right? Yep. And I'll, um, I get a point for, you know, I get good points for, it, you know, all my clean hits and avo- avoiding hits and all that. Yep. Whereas Wilder's just like, I've got 12 rounds to hit you once. Yeah. Smack in the in, in the chin, right? Yeah, and that's all I need. I, yep. I couldn't care less about how pretty it looks. Yeah, you know, not, not taking away one from the other. Yeah, that's why I say they're just polar opposites. Yeah. So now that they've fought each other, they to a degree understand what the tendencies are. Do you see any uh, any adjustments from both sides? Like, if you were Wilder, what 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 would, what would be the game plan? Like, how do you how do you plan for that? You've you've got a bit of an understanding of how he moves. I mean, it's obviously different. Mm. When you're there, and there might even be adjustments there, but but how do you game plan for that awkward movement? Uh, if from I, heavy like you brought up before, get more in the clinch. Yeah, just break up because when when Fury is on a roll, yeah, and he's just getting those jabs in, get you know looking good in front of the judges. Yeah, break it up, clinch, clinch, clinch. Yeah, just slow it down. Yeah, and you know he know he you know just go for it towards the end of the fight. Yeah, um, if he goes out swinging early, he'll yep. just exhaust himself yep. and he won't hit Tyson. Yeah, he won't. Hit, I mean, I'll be really surprised if he hits him hard in the first three rounds. If he gets one clean, you know, knockout level hit. Yeah. Well, for 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 Wilder, he needs to in in UFC. One of the criterion, if it goes goes to the judges, is octagon control. Mm-hmm. So he needs to control the center because yeah. if Fury is controlling the center, then he's dictating that distance management yeah. and essentially how he moves, right? So he needs to get him close to the edges, or or any, I mean. Any edge as possible to limit the uh, the amount of movements and, yeah. and make it really dirty because I think he's yeah. he's had a couple Clinch of uppercuts. Clinch him, getting close to yeah. the ropes. Yeah. You know, mate, you know, get in, get some close range body hits yeah. as well. Just try and work, get the energy out of him. Yeah. Because like I said at the end of the day, Tyson's a controller. Yeah. You know, he'll take the center. Yeah. He'll dance around the ring. Yeah. Um, and it, at, at that point, you know, he's you basically, you know, if, if he's say in the eighth round, yep. you know, he would start to panic and his head is like, I've only got one more round to knock him out. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. a ninth. I've only got one more round to knock he him out. He needs to get that connection pretty early. Yeah. Because if he does what he did in the twelfth round early on, like, I don't care how good you are, you can't you can't keep You will be dazed. You can't keep driving under the influence yeah, so <laughs> for a couple of rounds. Th- that'll be critical right? if he can. If he I can. just don't think he will be able to. Yeah. Just because of Tyson's movement. Yeah. I mean, it's going for broke. If he if he goes in the first three rounds, uses up a ton of energy, yep. hits him, like I said, fight will probably be over even if Tyson gets back up because he'll be partially, you know, he you know, he'll need to go to hospital, get a scan probably afterwards, right? For yeah. concussion. But equally if he doesn't hit him, he's gonna be gassed. And the other nine yes. rounds, Tyson's just gonna dance around him. I don't know if Tyson's got the power to knock him out though. If he does, bonus. It'd be but, so interesting. I but, mean like um, like yeah, man. I, I, I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to think. Has Wilder ever actually been? I mean, he hasn't knocked he's un- out. Yeah, I mean, knocked to the canvas. I can't think. I don't know. 
It has happened. Watching. It was a while ago. Yes. Oh yeah, against Ortiz. I think uh, I watched the. Uh, well, he just uh, brought him down. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so enough from me. What was your prediction? I mean, I don't mind. What's your prediction? Yeah. So, so like I said, I, I think he's he's going to. Um, you Wilder's mixing up. He'll figure it up. Um, I don't know how exactly he's going to do it either. I've I've, I've always thought like you know in MMA kind of like how Conor McGregor literally bull rushed Cowboy. Like, why don't we, do, we, we... I think boxing is definitely more calculated a sport, but when you've got, like... When you're carrying a sledgehammer in your hand, like, it can't hurt <laughs> to, to try swinging the mallet very yeah. early. But, you know, apart from that, I, I think, yeah, there are a lot more narratives and a lot more continuations if... Um, yeah, if they can get uh, Wilder to win, I think you just... You know, get Wilder to fight in bloody UK. Like, that'll still sell out as well, I mean, right? It's you know still I mean? going to be a massive fight. It's still going to be a massive fight. And if anything, that's the only, uh, you know, that little triangle that they have going on between those guys, that little threesome that they're going <laughs> on, is probably the only interesting thing. It's a little love triangle. In, right? in boxing happening anyway. Like, I mean, what, Canelo is just, I don't know. He's good. He's probably the only star. Lo- and he's just fighting guys that are well, not, there's just not, not at a his lot level. Of headline names exactly. There's no heat packing there. So, so. You, Boxing's even wor- in a worse position. In they need to really carry out that narrative as long as they can. Yeah, yeah, I agree. But um, I mean, do you think uh, hypothetically, as all well, Joshua say, if Joshua had to fight the other two, yeah, either of them, yep. what do you think? I want Wilder, man, because yeah. those two guys that yeah. knock people out, like I think that's that's a fun fight. Yeah, that will be yeah. That's, that'll be that's, trading. That's rock them, sock them. Like yeah. that's like robots. Yeah. The the great thing is like. It's almost like, yeah, there are obviously different adventures that can yield more financial benefits. But regardless, even if a, any of these guys lose, you can still pit them against each other and it'll still sell out. Like, there's enough intrigue going on yeah, yeah. for a couple more fights between, you know, different permutations yeah. of the uh, fighters. And I think, like you said, they want to keep that triangle going. You want, you, you want to drag it at least another two years. Yeah. So have a couple of, there's, you know, there's rematches. There's at least four fights, be- yeah, four fights you can see between those three guys. Oh, yeah. And people will watch it. It makes sense, and it's actually it's it's a good narrative to have that consistency in the top. Um, no, it no. will wash out for after a while, but yeah. you know. And when it does, years. hopefully Fury's done M, uh, wrestling or BJJ, yeah. so he's ready to come to UFC. He's like, I'm ready, mate. And uh, tackle the heavyweights. Yeah, that's I mean, the that, I mean, we don't all love that, but that's uh, probably a slim chance. Yeah. Awesome, mate. Well, we're at the end of it. Thanks, yeah. thanks for coming in. Yeah, no worries. Thank you. Awesome, bud. All right, cheers. cheers. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone.